Hello and welcome back to Your Choice 2022 General Election Series Part 2. I'm Mackenzie Decker. And I'm Denisha McDowell and thank you for joining us. Tonight we will go over the unofficial results from this year's election. We will also have Meridian Township's clerk Deborah Guthrie speaking on how election went in the township. We'll also cover the results of the Okemos Public Schools bond proposal, where results were just revealed Wednesday morning. But first, since absentee voting hasn't been increasing since the 2020 election, let's discuss the impact that it has had in comparison to other elections. Looking back into the history of absentee voting, voting by mail can trace its roots to soldiers voting far from home during the Civil War and World War II. By the late 1800s, some states were extending absentee ballots to civilian voters under certain conditions. Over the years, it was omitted and reintroduced various times, but it wasn't until 2000 that Oregon became the first state to move to an all-male voting system, according to History.com. Fast forward to 2020 with the presidential election taking place in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic when concerns about virus transmission in crowds caused lawmakers to rethink rules around appearing in person to vote. However, for the first time in history, at least 75% of Americans are able to vote absentee. The option to submit an absent voter ballot by mail or dropping it off to your clerk's office has been easier than ever before. Continuing on to this year and onward, all registered voters in Michigan have the right to vote by mail. It's a safe way to vote and protect your health, and the process is secure and accurate. According to Michigan.gov, one week prior to Election Day, nearly 2 million Michigan citizens have requested absentee ballots and 1.1 million voters have already submitted their absentee ballot. This is a 73% increase from the number of absentee ballots requested one week ahead of the 2018 midterm election. That is a major increase over the years with absentee voting being a helpful option for voters. We also know the numbers have increased since then. Also, I noticed, Kenzie, the results had came in a lot faster as soon as Wednesday morning. They did, and it has really helped with voter turnout, wouldn't you agree? Absolutely, I agree. Moving forward to our state proposals, where all three proposals have been adopted. Here's a recap of what each proposal entails. Proposal one is to adjust the term limits and financial disclosure rules for state officials. State officials will now have to file personal financial disclosure reports. This includes reporting assets, liabilities, income, future employment agreements, gifts, travel reimbursements, and other payments. Also within this proposal, the legislative term limits are changing to an overall total of 12 years, regardless of which chamber they serve. And also, this will take effect April 15, 2024. And Kenzie, can you list out all the state officials who are required to file, please? Absolutely. It's the governor, the lieutenant governor, secretary of state, and attorney general. Thank you so much. Proposal 2 amends adding voting and election-related policies to the state's constitution. This includes a nine-day early voting period and a requirement that the state funds absentee ballot drop boxes and postages for absentee applications and ballots. It will be a state-funded prepaid postage to return your ballot for submission. There will also be a state-funded system to track submitted absent voter ballot applications and absent voter ballots. This proposal also includes the fundamental right to vote without harassing conduct, where registered voters can submit a secret ballot in all elections. Also, those serving in the military or living overseas, their ballots can be counted if postmarked on or before election day and received by the appropriate election official within six days after an election. I find it great and helpful so voters can be able to track their ballots or their applications so that way they feel more comfortable and better in knowing where their ballots or their applications are going, Kenzie. Yeah, absolutely. That's a super important part of it. Yes. And the last proposal, which has been an ongoing topic since the Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade, Proposal 3. Michigan votes to protect the constitutional right to reproductive freedom, ensuring the right to abortion in the state constitution, preventing a 1931 abortion ban from taking effect. 
Nearly half of voters in Michigan said abortion was the most important issue deciding their vote according to exit polls. We will now reveal this year's general election unofficial results as of November 10th at 2.30 p.m. Starting with the gubernatorial race, Democratic candidate Gretchen Whitmer was reelected for a second term as governor. Whitmer defeated Republican candidate Tudor Dixon in a tight race. Governor Whitmer won with 54% of the votes, while Dixon received 43% of the votes. This is the first time in Michigan's history that the governor's race included two female candidates. Next up, we will be going over the results from the eight races that impacted Meridian Township, starting with Alyssa Slotkin claiming her victory as seventh district representative in Congress, which was one of the nation's most competitive races. Slotkin ran against Republican candidate Tom Barrett. We had the opportunity to interview Alyssa Slotkin as part of Your Choice 2022 candidate interview series. Let's take a look at her plans for the district. So for me, you know, I think my closing statement would be that in a place like mid-Michigan, I know that we still believe that government should work for as broad a group of people as possible, that we want leaders who have integrity, even if we don't always agree with them, um, and that we want our country to work um, and to be moving in the path of progress, not pulling ourselves backwards. Um, and I think at the end of the day, um, while people may have their one issue that they decide their vote on, in general, people want principled leadership. And I hope that in the short time I've been the representative here, I have demonstrated that. It's important to me. Um, I would rather uh, not win an election than do something that violates my principles. And I will continue to lead um, uh, in that way uh, if I'm reelected in November. Now looking at the 28th District Michigan Senate race, Democratic candidate Sam Singh defeated Republican candidate Daylin Howard. Sam joined us for our candidate interview series this year as well. Let's take a look. To me, uh, there's a, a great opportunity uh, for, uh, for our state. Uh, my wife and I have a five-year-old son, uh, Remington, who is just starting kindergarten. And I know the Michigan that I grew up in uh, was known for its public schools. It was known for its great universities. It had much better infrastructure. And I want that same Michigan for my son, for all the kids uh, here in Michigan. And so it's one of the reasons why I'm running uh, for the state Senate. I, I think we can do much more as a state that uh, looks at uh, workforce development, making sure that there's jobs and opportunities, make sure that we're funding our uh, K through 12 schools and our uh, community colleges and our universities uh, at a better level, doing smart economic development, and then at the end, protecting our, our environment, uh, making sure that the quality of life that we've been known to have here in the state continues uh, for generations to come. Julie Brixey also ran and won her race for state representative in the 73rd district. Brixey ran against Republican candidate Norm Schinkel. Staying with state reps, Democratic candidate Penelope Cernoglu ran against Republican candidate Chris Stewart and claimed her seat as Michigan's House of Representatives to represent District 75. Let's take a look at both of their highlights as they also participated in Home TV's Your Choice 2022 candidate interviews. So the fight for democracy continuing and the fight to uh, continue to uh, provide uh, safe and legal abortions are the two biggest priorities that that we're facing and if we have a majority in the legislature we'll be able to change that and people have the ability to vote for those things on November 8th. So I think that um, you know by being active in the community and um, doing so many um, different things um, it will enable me to be an effective advocate um, for our district and um, just really work um, with everyone in the community to ensure that um, we're all represented. Next, we'll be moving on to the Ingham County Board of Commissioner races. In Meridian Township, there are four county commissioners who represent our area. The first race is 12th District Ingham County Commissioner, where Democratic candidate Irene Cahill defeated Republican candidate Mark McKeel. The second race is the 13th District, where Democratic candidate Amy Salisbury won over Republican candidate Paul Adams Lello. 
Two more candidates that represent Meridian Township have also claimed their victory in this year's election. Mark Polstofer, who will be representing Sutter and Meridian Township in the 14th District, defeated Republican candidate Sam Fringy. Polstofer and Fringy also ran against each other in the 2020 election, with Polstofer winning that race as well. Lastly, Republican candidate Monica Schaefer defeated Democratic candidate Brooke Locke to secure the 15th District Ingham County Commissioner seat. Mark and Monica have also participated in our 2022 candidate interview series. Let's also take a look at their highlights from their interview. It's been a great honor and privilege to serve the past two terms on the Board of Commissioners. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, active in our community and I look forward to uh, hopefully serving a third term on the Board of Commissioners. Um, I've covered, I think, most of the more important ones of the public safety, um, bringing back um, small businesses and the mental health issues that are plaguing a lot of our crime and, um, and a lot of our youth. Um, I think it's important to um, have a very diverse background in order to represent the area, especially in this district, because in this district you have the rural representation and then you also have parts of Meridian Township, which actually the parts of Meridian Township that I have, which are precinct 6, 7, and 22, are actually the rural parts of Meridian Township. Everything pretty much except for the Shoals subdivision, um, where I used to live with my husband um, when we first moved to the area. Um, I've lived in the area approximately 15 years in Williamstown Township. And um, like I said, I, I know I have the ability to be strong county commissioner. We will now cover the results of the Okemos Public Schools bonding proposal. A total of 8,623 votes were for the proposal to be adopted. As briefly discussed on our pre-show, this proposal involves school, building, and ground improvements needed to meet the district's instructional model. This proposal will also address pressing issues of aging infrastructure. Okemos Public Schools is looking to borrow the sum of not to exceed $275 million. And Mackenzie, were there any more additional plans in this proposal? There were. They're hoping to use the money to replace all student devices within the next two years. They're looking to get new classroom technology like smart boards and projectors. And they also want to add new flexible learning furniture. Um, this can be moved, collapsed, or repositioned to meet any of the instructional needs of students or to meet the needs of any lesson. Yes, and I know this proposal will definitely be helpful for the students and the staff. Now we can turn to communications manager, Samantha Deal, where she'll ask Meridian Township's clerk, Deborah Guthrie, to answer a few questions related to this year's election. Thanks, Mackenzie. Today I'm here with Meridian Township clerk, Deborah Guthrie, to discuss the 2022 general election. Thank you so much for being here with us today. You're welcome. To start, what was the biggest challenge of election day? Oh my gosh. Um, I would say the biggest challenge of election day was trying to get the number of voters that we had in line for voter registration through in an efficient manner. There was at one point the state qualified voter file system was freezing on us and so we had students, mostly students, um, lined up out the door, down the sidewalk all day long registering to vote, and then we would issue them an absentee ballot. So we're registering them, giving them a ballot, voting, registering, issuing, ballot, on and on. Um, and so in that process, and when the system froze, I said to our deputy clerk, I'm like, Con contact the county. The system's freezing. We need to get these people through. So he contacted the county. They contacted the Bureau of Elections. They restarted the system, and then it started working like magic. It started going quicker. And then the other thing we did to make it more efficient, we went out into um, the student line, the student line, the voter line. It was mostly students, it really was. We went out into the, um, into the line and verified their, their uh, driver's license, verified their, uh, 
uh, where they lived, you know, to, to make sure that they lived in Meridian Township so that they could be voting here. So that process really sped things up because there were a lot of uh, voters who would come up to the counter and they didn't have their residency verification handy. And so they were spending five to 10 minutes when they came, got to us looking for that information. So it was much more efficient to go out into the line and, and verify it and have them show it to us while they were standing in line and have them fill out the registration application and the ballot and the application for a ballot while they were standing there. And then we could verify that everything, their driver's license number matched up, their residency was yes in Meridian Township and that we verified it. And so we would do like, we have little special pens, you know, and they know my little autograph. And so we were able to get, get, get the uh, voters through much more quickly. But I think that was probably, it was unexpected and certainly we didn't have the lines that East Lansing had for certain, but that was unexpected and just uh, trying to get them all through in an efficient manner because a lot of them had already went to the city clerk's office in East Lansing, stood in line for hours, found out they were in the wrong place. They sent them here, so now they're standing here in line. And really, they were the most patient and kind and pleasant voters that I've ever seen in my life. Nobody complained about waiting. Nobody complained about having to show verification. There wasn't, there was just super nice voters, you know? I'm glad to hear that because I feel like it can go either one way or the other. And I know a lot of people felt very strongly about this election and felt very, like felt like they had to get out there and cast their vote, so. Yes, we had one um, at 8 p.m you know, if you were in line at 8 p.m., you could still vote. Mm -hmm. And so we had moved to the line inside because it was starting to get cold. So the line had moved inside and at 8 p.m., we didn't lock the doors, but we didn't allow anybody in the doors to get into line at that point. So there was one voter at 8.01 who wanted to get into the door. And we said, sorry, it's 8 p.m., you cannot vote. Like you cannot get in line, like you're not in line right now, so you cannot get in line after 8 p.m. And he became very angry and kicked over a plant and pushed over a sign. And, you know, we really just looked at him like, really? He, you know, and he's trying to explain, well, I had to go do this and I had to go do that and I had to go do that. And I'm like, okay, well, you could have done this first before you did those things. 8 p.m. is the deadline and that's the law. So we have to follow the law. Can you tell me more about Meridian Township's pre-processing of the absentee ballots? We, uh, you could do that two days prior to the election or one day prior to the, the election, you could decide what um, you wanted to do. And so we did that Sunday and Monday and pre-processing involved being able to slice open all of the envelopes for the absentee ballots. So any absentee ballot that was received up to 5 p.m. on Friday, we were able to pre-process. It was over 9,000 ballots. And so Sunday and Monday, we began that pre-processing procedure. So we sliced open the envelopes and then you could take the, all of the ballots are in secrecy sleeves. So they're supposed to, and we try to tell every voter, put it back in the secrecy sleeve, put it back in the secrecy sleeve. Only the ballot number shows. Do not let your ballot be shown, just, just the ballot number. Because we separate that from the ballot when we feed it through the high speed scanner to, to read the ballot, to tally the votes. So, we were able to take it out of the, we were able to verify all of the numbers on the outside. And there's like a bunch of these right here. So I'm just gonna show you. So we were able to verify like all of the numbers on the outside that the ballot number matched the name, the ballot to the name of the person. And so we were able to match those. And then we were able to take the, um, take the ballot out and match that number to the outside of the envelope. So we knew that all of that matched, that our initials were there, that we already um, verified that, um, that we had processed that ballot, that we had received that ballot, and that it was in our system and it was ready to be processed and tallied on Tuesday. So that, that's what we did on Sunday and Monday. And did you find that process helpful for you? Yes. <laughs> I hear nothing but good things from the AB Counting Board and our AB Counting Board Chair about how much that sped the entire process up, up and how much that made it significantly smoother for them to tally all the votes on Tuesday. What was the voter turnout like 
for this election compared to uh, other midterm elections that you've seen? So in 2018, there were almost probably around 7,500 to 8,000 absentee ballots that had been returned. And this election, this midterm election, we had almost 14,000 absentee ballots that were that were returned. I think we had around 21, 22,000 uh, voters um, who cast their ballot in this midterm election. I don't. I don't know the total count that we had in 2018, um, but I do know the absentee count. So I know that the absentee count was doubled. Wow. And I'm sure that's a trend we'll keep seeing yes, throughout the years. I think so too. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to say about how this election went or anything else you'd like the residents to know? Well, I do uh, want people to know that, um, you know, you hear a lot of things in the news, um, about election uh, issues across the country or uh, people being nervous to go to the polls and um, and int voter intimidation and that kind of thing. I don't think I've ever felt that in Meridian Township. Um, I had lots of our election inspectors, especially new election inspectors, concerned about voter intimidation, concerned about open carry, and there were lots of questions that they had of me. And of course, we met with our police department and our police chief, Ken Plaga, and our township manager, Frank Walsh. And we discussed those issues and how we would handle it and the best procedures for that. And we worked with our chairs and election inspectors on that. But I've never felt in this township, and maybe that's why I've been here for over 40 years, and that's why I've worked in this building since 1996. Um, I've never felt intimidated. I've never felt disrespected. I've never felt um, like people didn't care or that people weren't there for each other. I always felt like this was a community that really loved being engaged in the democratic process and respected the rights of everyone else being able to be engaged in the democratic process. And I think, um, you know, when I ran as clerk in 2020, just being involved with the voters and the community members for so long um, and having that relationship with them, I knew going into it that voter in in intimidation wasn't a concern then, it's not a concern now, I haven't had that concern. Sure, you get a few voters who are, you know, upset they missed the 4 p.m. deadline to get their absentee ballot on, on um, Monday or, or somebody's concerned, they missed some kind of deadline to get their ballot or they showed up at a wrong polling location because they threw their voter ID card. So they call me and tell me and I miscommunicated to them. And, you know, so I understand those things happen. People get upset. Um, but I think that the true um, sense and pulse of the community is that if this is just an engaged, uh, we have 67% uh, voter turnout. You know, and I think that's a phenomenal number for a midterm election, 67%. And some of our precincts were, you know, like 80% turnout. I mean, so I don't know. It just makes me feel proud to be, because it's one of my favorite days of the year. So it just makes me feel proud to be a Meridian Township president and the Meridian Township clerk and just be involved with the community. So I don't know. I think we have a, so I guess the only thing I would say is that we have a pretty phenomenal community and I love our voters here and and you know I look forward to it's so far away I feel like I look forward to the presidential election in 2024 and and um, being the clerk for that for that year as well good well thank you again for joining us and thank you to your office the election inspectors everyone who helped make this election go off without a hitch and hopefully you all get some well-deserved break this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know, it's not, it's not me. It's everyone behind the scenes. You know, I'm in front a lot, but there's, 
a dozen people in the back room who are processing the ballots, who are verifying signatures, who are keeping the record, record retention, who are calling people who forgot to sign and calling them repeatedly. And they're, they're, you can look in voter records and see that some people have been called eight times that addresses were trying to be found like eight or nine times, like the effort and the length at which the election workers behind the scenes, they're the ones doing the true work. I'm just out here talking. They're the ones doing it. So I'm glad you said that because um, there are so many staff members who uh, were sworn in as election inspectors and helped out. And our township manager, Frank Walsh, really encouraged um, staffers to be involved in the election and process. And he was very involved in the election process. And I think that is the sense of internal community here in the in the township. And I think that voters and residents in the township should know how much we came together as a group that, you know, I'm I'm just the person who was elected, but it's really everyone, all of the 22 precincts with four, five, six, seven, eight election inspectors processing voters all day. Those are the true heroes. Those are the people that made it happen. The people behind the scenes who have been there since May in a back office with no windows and records and it's like a vault in there and you know there's a heavy steel locked door so no one can get in there and just the 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 detail and their organizational system that they have to keep and maintain records is second to none. It's phenomenal. Like this is just an amazing, amazing group of people. So it's, that's probably the, those are the shining stars of elections is the people who are making it happen and the voters who come in to, to vote. Those are all the shining stars. Yeah. Well, thank you so much again and have a great rest of your weekend. Thank you. <laughs> you too. Back to you, Denisha and Kenzie. Thank you, Samantha, and thank you to Meridian Township's clerk, Deborah Guthrie, for speaking on your experience during the election. That's all for today's part two episode of Your Choice 2022 General Election Recap Show. Thank you again for tuning into our election series. This year's election had been a tight but great race. I'm Mackenzie Decker. And I'm Denisha McDowell. And thank you for tuning in. You have a great night.